Hello, good morning. My name is David Amelotti, and this is Little Hills Big Hearts. We're going to start off today with introducing you with our two special guests for today. First, we have Teresa Gilly. She's the lead animal control officer of the St. Charles Animal Control Shelter, and she will be sharing some stories of man's best friends. It'll be very exciting. We'll be joined along with her dog, Brownie, as well. Uh, we're also going to have uh, Jody Devonshire. She's a health cook from the local all-organic restaurant, the Bike Stop Cafe here in St. Charles. But her business, not just about food, and we'll find about that in a little bit. Before our first guest, I'd like to remind everyone about the Facebook page. In case you didn't know, you can go to facebook.com backslash Little Hills Big Hearts and give us a like. There you can also find a link to participate in our weekly photo trivia and can follow with extra updates uh, posted by myself and those in charge of the page. Uh, also, today's photo trivia. We want you, the guest, to uh, guess the name of the building in the super zoomed in photo that we have. So we zoomed in close. You only get a close little shot of what we have to offer. But give it a try. Go on the Facebook page. You can go look at the photo and give us our guest. The three correct answers will be uh, awarded this very beautiful Thanksgiving basket full of goods from the Goody Goody Shop. So hurry up, do not miss out on that. The answer will be revealed at the end of today's show. So I've also been notified that I can offer you a tip. So we're gonna go with this. The building located on Main Street in St. Charles, Missouri. So there's your tip and we'll see if you're able to uh, figure it out by the end of the show. With that in mind, I'd like to introduce our first guest of the uh, day, uh, Teresa Gilly. Teresa, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, now, you are the lead animal control officer for the St. Charles Animal Control Shelter. Exactly what services do you provide to the community? We are animal control for the city of St. Charles. We provide um, shelter for uh, stray animals that are in the area, cats and dogs. Um, we enforce the ordinance with, within the city limits. We provide limited medical care for the animals that are in our care. We provide adoption for the animals. Um, complaints, we answer daily complaints of dogs running at large, bark complaints. We uh, assist with uh, the police department with any um, neglect cases they may have. Um, fire department as well. Um, that's really about it. <laughs> <laughs> for the dogs I can't think that, right now. <laughs> no, for the dogs that are in your care, how do you receive them? Is this a situation where you go out or do they come to you? Both. We patrol the streets of St. Charles. Um, residents will capture the dogs for us and, and then we'll go pick them up or people bring the dogs to us. We also have people who surrender their dogs or cats to us. So. When you think of the day-to-day -day operations that you have to uh, partake in, can you just kind of like run around? What's you know the time you go into work? Uh, give us some examples of the tasks that you'd have to do in your daily routine. Well, when we first come in in the morning, um, we go through, check all the animals, make sure everything's okay, and uh, we begin cleaning. We have uh, 26 kennel runs. Uh, we have four rooms of cat cages and majority of the time all them cages are filled. Uh, we start cleaning. We normally have two people that clean in the morning. We have a part-time kennel person that helps us out. And uh, volunteers, we're limited on our volunteers right now. We could really use extra volunteers um, to help us clean the animals. Um, so they're, they're cleaned in the morning. Then we uh, run calls in the afternoon or during the morning, um, answer our phones, um, escort the residents through the shelter and uh, show them adoption, adoptable animals. Is there any way that you try and publicize your works here in the community? We do. We have a, uh, we are on the, the St. Charles City website. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a link on there to our adoptable pets. We have a pet finder. We're on pet finder. Um, we have a, uh, a Facebook page. So we're on there. And uh, we post anything that's up and coming that we're doing. And we post adoptable pets that are on there. Um, we have put on there um, you know, information of, uh, of ordinance changes or anything like that. Now, as far as volunteers, you mentioned there's a need for more hands. How exactly do volunteers become incorporated with your services? What are the tasks? What are the responsibilities? 
We have volunteers, they have to be over 18 years of age. Um, we have a couple of volunteers over the past couple of years that have volunteered from Lindenwood because of the hours that they have to have. Um, other ones are women or, or men that, you know, have a couple hours during the day or on the weekend. Um, we ask them, if, you know, to help us clean the kennels. Um, it's very important that we maintain a, a clean, sanitized area for the cats to maintain, you know, their health and that. So we have them help us clean the kennels, walk dogs. Um, they can interact with the public, you know, show them the animals, answer phones if, uh, you know, any kind of paperwork. We have the volunteers pretty much do everything we do. And what's the process as far as someone wanting to come forth and volunteer? You mentioned they have to be 18 years of age. Is it a online registration, uh, hard we copy? Do, we do not have it online. It's a hard copy down at the shelter. They can come down to the shelter, pick one up for us, and then since we are a division under the police department, it has to go through the approval of the police department. And if we look at the dogs that you're able to bring in and help, uh, obviously various conditions, they range in age. It is it a situation where uh, some of these dogs won't find a home? Or are you able to find them uh, loving care? Dogs we are able to, to find homes for. Um, we have a, a great group that was started over the summer, which is a nonprofit group for the shelter, which is called Friends of St. Charles City Animal Control. And Friends of the Shelter, with their help, they have been assisting us with getting animals spayed and neutered, any medical treatment, cats tested for um, feluc, um, and they, they also work with rescue groups to where if we can't place the animal or if something, the animal has a defect, they work with the different rescue groups to try to get that animal pulled out of our shelter. So really euthanasia, it's not as much an issue for you because of your work and your ability to reach out to those in the community? Yes. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, we're going to step away for a quick break. However, when we return, we will be joined back with Teresa Gilley, and we'll get some more insight into some local events coming up, as well as the work that she and her business do. So when we return, more with Teresa here on Little Hills Big Hearts. We are back with Teresa Gilley from St. Charles Animal Control Shelter. And just a few questions have been sent on the Facebook by Jennifer Young from St. Charles. She wants to know, what is Oktoberfest and how can my dog participate? Oktoberfest is something we started seven years ago. Um, I wanted to get something to where the public, the residents of St. Charles, could bring their dogs out and showcase their dogs and, you know, just have a fun interacting day with your dog. Um, since then, we started out very small and it was just a couple of vendors, a couple of rescue groups. Um, since then, this past year, we've had about 350 people that showed up. So if you're interested, just keep an eye on our website. We're going to try to do it. It's either the first or second weekend of, Docto of October. I'm not really sure yet, but um, it's a lot of fun. And uh, we do have great prizes for uh, the costume contest. So is it more of a uh, competition? There are awards that are uh, given are. to the dogs? Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get uh, some donated items in, um, and local businesses will donate a basket. Uh, vets' offices, you know, donate a basket from their vets' office, and uh, just some stuff that we've we've uh, had people donate for us to give away at at Dogtober. Are there any requirements for a dog to participate? Um, he has to be current on the vaccinations, current on rabies, and um, no, I mean we had. I think 75 dogs this past year uh, dress up and walk in the parade. Um, that doesn't include the dogs that were already at the staging area where, we're, where we were set up at. What is the value of the parade to the dogs, to those involved uh, in the event? I just think they, they enjoy dressing up. Some of the costumes are just, they are so unique and it, it's it's just fun to see them walking down the street with, with their dog and they're dressed up as a prisoner or you know something like that it's uh we've had uh alice in wonderland characters we've had um ghostbusters characters the the people um were dressed in ghostbuster characters and the dogs were the the main characters as this event has gone on to grow have you seen more of a community involvement with the event yes Yes, yes, yes. Um, we try to get different judges every year. 
Um, the judges that we get is one council person we try to, and then two residents that live within the city limits of St. Charles. One of our judges this year was an elementary school student from Coverdale, and uh, she did a great job. And then the other one was, was a, a resident in the area. Now you brought with you uh, Brownie, who is, is, is a male, and Brownie has been behaving very well on set he through has. this whole show. He has. And now has Brownie, has he participated in any of the events? Does he have any experience? He, ha he has not. Um, we just got him into the shelter probably about three weeks ago as a stray. Um, he is available for adoption. And he's, he's really working it here today, as you can see. <laughs> well, I like how he's, you know, stretched out, laying yep. down there on Jessica's lap. He's, oh, he's enjoying that. Yeah. He's what a, a ham. He is. He's, he's <laughs> you know, I was thinking he was going to be kind of hard to handle, but no, he, uh, he's doing very well. You know, we mentioned the parade and how that goes to benefit the shelter, bring some awareness there uh, to the dog. You have a dog right there, Brownie, and you see how adorable he is. And there's a lot of these situations that you're taking care of right now. These dogs who maybe didn't have the best home life at once, maybe they were stranded. Exactly. And you're looking at Brownie, look how adorable he is. This is a pet that can uh, befriend your children or maybe keep you company. If, if you uh, are single and got the place to yourself, you know, you're looking for a companion. Yep. You know, many dogs like Brownie, how, how does that relationship, how can that grow so instantaneously? Uh, volunteers. Um, volunteers interacting with the animal getting him out of the cage. Brownie was actually uh, abandoned. Him and four littermates were abandoned in, in a building. And uh, we took him in. And they've just, they're, they're neutered, they're all fixed, everything's done for them. And uh, just the interaction between humans and dogs and walking him and getting him out of the cage, you know, the just, you know, he's, he's just turned out to be a great dog. I'm just really surprised how well he's been. You know, I got to meet Brownie before the show started. And, and as for one, I'm, I'm terrified of dogs. I'll be the first one to admit, <laughs> especially the small, jumpy ones. And yeah. Brownie came in very well and behaved. He uh, did. Do you see any of those interactions occur? You'll have a guest, have a volunteer come to the shelter, want a volunteer for a few hours. They're kind of hesitant about working with dogs or with a friend. And then it, they just fall in love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's happened before. Um, we've had a couple people that come in and end up adopting a certain dog because they just, just fell in love with it. So, yeah. Do you um, see um, if there's a message that you want to get out, especially anyone interested in a pet, um, why should they come to the shelter and bring these dogs into their life? Um, you always want to come to a shelter. Um, we have a very low euthanasia rate. Um, a lot of shelters that are bigger than ours have a higher euthanasia rate. And you want to rescue a dog rather than, you know, go and purchase one. And if you're looking for a certain breed, we will end up with it in, in our shelter or in a different shelter. You know, I mean, not necessarily saying you got to come to our shelter, but as long as you go to a shelter and rescue a dog, you know, or a cat, um, then you're doing a good thing. You bring a dog into your home, the process to adapt that dog, are there, are there risks? What do you mean? And as far as, uh, is there the health check? Uh, is there a process that the volunteer has to go through in order to bring that dog into their home? Yes, yes. Um, some of them come in already spayed and neutered. Um, we have a vet that honors our, we have a voucher system that honors our voucher that covers the cost of the spay and neuter. And then um, they get that done. So um, we do follow up with everything that we do with the shelter with the animals when they get adopted. Now, you've been asked a multitude of questions over your, your career, uh, 18 years if, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. And have you ever been, you're interviewed, do you ever wish that there was one aspect they would look into more about their questions? Is there one thing that you wish people knew about the shelter they may not be aware of? Um, volunteering is, is great. Um, spay and neutering, you know, is the number one thing. If people spayed and neutered, you know, um, we might not have, you know, brownie here or something like that. But, yeah, spay and neutering is, uh, is very important. Um, we're always looking for volunteers. We're always looking for donated items. Um, if you can't donate to us, you can always donate to our shelter friends. They, ha they do have a Facebook page, too, along with St. Charles City Animal Control. And, um, yeah, just come down and visit us. I mean, you you'll be surprised with what you find. Before we take a quick break, do you have uh, contact information you want to throw up so that anybody can uh, reach out to you? Um, the website that you would go to is um, mo.gov, 
which is the St. Charles City's website, and we're under animal control there. Um, we do, have, like I said, have a Facebook page, and uh, you can always call the shelter at 636-949-3395. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Teresa, for joining us no today. And we'll be in touch soon because Thank I want to hang out with Brownie a few more, uh, few more moments. <laughs> no problem. When we come back from break, we will be joined alongside Jody Devonshire, and she'll be giving us an insight into the Bike Stop Cafe. And she has a few foods for me to try out. Oh, I'm excited. We'll be right back on Little Hills, Big Hearts. Before our last guest, it's time for us to reveal the answer to our photo trivia. Uh, well, we showed you this picture earlier, and we asked if you knew what place this was. So, this is, make sure it's queued up here, the Historical Society of St. Charles. We had uh, lots of correct answers, and we raffled off three names. Check out our Facebook page after the show to see if you are one of those lucky winners. Now, uh, please join me uh, in welcoming our next guest, Jody Devonshire. And Jody, uh, a fantastic spread that you've put right here. You are uh, basically, we'd say, in charge of the uh, the Bike Cafe downtown St. Charles. Give us a little insight. How does that uh, concept originate? Well, about four years ago, my husband and I, who are both avid cyclists and healthy eaters, would always end up after a, a ride, we would end up at a a restaurant or a cafe and my husband always said you know you should sell your food and people would love it so I thought well you know let's go ahead and give it a try so that's what we did. No, it, it all looks so fantastic. It, do you have a favorite? I do have the favorite uh, it, but it depends so right now I'm eating the Juarez almost every day which is a breakfast wrap we serve breakfast all day long and the Juarez is actually named after Juarez Tinker he's a mountain biker so all of our the titles of all of our sandwiches and wraps are named after cycling related items. No, that's absolutely fantastic. Is there, uh, when you're thinking of the demographic that you're trying to hit, because obviously the idea to take cycling and food together, it's pretty unique. Uh, do you, what kind of, uh, who do you bring in? I mean, do you see students from the campus come in? Is it individuals from the community? Uh, tourists, I would imagine with the bike trail tourists. right by your restaurant. Yeah, so the idea, part of the idea of our model was we wanted to make cycling accessible to everyone. So we have a full bike shop at the cafe. You can rent, you can repair, we sell bicycles, but we try to sell bicycles and rent bicycles to everyone. So we're all inclusive. So we do see tourists, we do see people from the neighborhood. We see people who've never ridden a bicycle before. We try to get them, encourage them to ride. We, we host rides for women and minorities. We would try to get, make sure that everyone is able to have access to cycling. That's absolutely fantastic. And, and as we mentioned before, you have provided a tremendous spread and I'm gonna let you kind of guide us through everything that you pre pre uh, you've prepared here. Sure. That soup looks fantastic. Thank you. Well, this is actually our vegetarian chili. This is one of our newest items on the menu. Uh, the vegetarian chili is not vegan. We do have vegan, vegetarian, and gluten-free items on our menu, which we all have denoted. But this one in particular is vegetarian. It's very luscious. It's a super rich, not too spicy chili. I like how you just, even the words, my mouth is starting to water. <laughs> is, oh my goodness, is it okay if we yeah, have a bite. Can we dip in? So dip do we, in. So what is this? So these are uh, pita chips. All right. And you can you can use a spoon, of course. That's fine too. But so I can just scoop it in you there. You can scoop it in there. Yeah. We don't want to get it to drip. But oh, uh, see, I'm trying to get a bean, and that's not going very well. <laughs> and I'm just we're just gonna give up on that bean. I'll get you later. <laughs> that's good. That's really good. Thank you. Because I was really concerned that was going to be spicy, and it's not. It's kind of like a mild taste. It is mild. That's really good. I need a Thank napkin, Very but flavorful. that's really good. <laughs> Great. And then um, here we have what's called the Betty. The Betty is a slang term for a female mountain biker. So that's what we named it. And these are League waffles. League is a small city in Belgium, and they're very sweet waffles. Often you don't need to serve them with any syrup, which is why I don't have any here. And then we top them with our apple. It's kind of like an apple pie filling. All right. And then whipped topping and a little bit of cinnamon, and they're completely delicious in the morning. Great way to start your day. And from a health standpoint, not Zero. One, one calorie. Not one, not one calorie? <laughs> not healthy at all, but super delicious. Oh, if man. you want to move to healthy, we healthy. have our, our famous peanut butter balls. All right. And there is a secret recipe. I've had off offers of lots of money to get the recipe, but basically uh, they're all, all natural peanut butter and honey. Really? So they're, they're a great way to start out, like finish your ride, get a good bite. People who eat them with their, their meals for snacks, they put them in their backpacks, or they, we sell them by the dozens. So. And then your last one, and mm -hmm. I just thought about this, before we get to uh, the wrap itself, 
I'm looking at the side mm -hmm. on the plate. Can you explain this? Because I thought those were French fries originally. Right. They got a little closer. Notice they're tri-colored. Uh, what are those? So those are veggie straws. We uh -huh. always try to do a little bit of a healthy edge on our meals. So instead of chips, we use baked veggie straws. So they are potato based, but they have vegetables in them. And they're not fried. They're, uh, they're baked. And they're uh -huh. pretty good. And they're super fun. So you feel like you're eating French fries? But you're actually getting a healthy potato chip. Well, as healthy as potato chips. If you don't mind, can I reach down and Please. take one? All right, so Enjoy. I'm going to take this. And, okay, even the texture is completely different than what I anticipated. It's more of like a chip kind of thing, I it's thought. It's very much like a chip. Well, that's better than french fries. That's it's really good. better for you. This is, wow. So so then the idea, was this something that you originated? or is No, this, this, the is kind a, of... this is something that you can even buy at the store. Really? You can buy those at Deerberg's, yep. They're veggie straws, they're wonderful. I sent them to school with my daughter and all of her friends liked them so I knew it would be a hit at the cafe. So in regards to any of this food, it's it's definitely health, you know, it's good health wise, right. but it's all within moderation as well. Obviously sure. I couldn't supersize that order of <laughs> right. Uh, sticks right there and, and still right. be a good thing. And yeah, we have, we have items that aren't so healthy, but every time we make a purchase, whenever we buy something or we make something at the cafe, we consider both the health and social consequence. So this, the bakery that does these waffles we don't do them is an all women owned bakery really? and they donate a lot of their money to nonprofit for women charities and things like that so we always consider those sort of things when we make a purchase now you guys really do fit a very unique niche because the all organic menu that's growing in popularity with in recent years um, yeah. how do you feel that you contribute as a business as far as promoting obviously you have the cycling you have the healthy foods but how do you reach out to the community and educate them on this well that's a hard part but we do my husband and I both do teach classes at St. Charles Community College and through the city of St. Charles, trying to teach people how to compost and garden. We have an organic garden in the back of our cafe, and we try to get people on bicycles and things like that. But definitely education is one of our biggest challenges. So you've brought a fantastic spread. Is there that one dish that you haven't brought with us today? You mentioned the uh, store favorite, but what's that one dish that you're going to tempt us with to bring us by to visit? Well, that would be the Lewis and Clark. Really? So the Lewis and Clark uh, is named after, of course, the Lewis and Clark. Um, um, the duo. The duo. They found the West. <laughs> right, those guys. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not really. <laughs> uh, the, the actual meal is it's feta and organic spring mix and pesto. So it's a really light, fresh way to start your afternoon. No, it looks absolutely delicious, and it, it's fascinating. This has been out for just a few minutes. It just looks so fresh, so tasty, and it's not something that when you look at it, you're going to bite into it, you're going to regret a little while. You know, it looks right. fresh. You know you're going to feel good, and that's one thing. The, the food just looks so well prepared, um, and it's just been a pleasure Thank visiting you. with you. Uh, coming up, looking ahead to the future, is there anything that you wish to promote before we go? This is your chance, so uh, sell us. <laughs> Okay, well, please come by the stop, Bike Stop Cafe. You can find us on Facebook. It's uh, Facebook backslash bikestopcafe.com. Um, but really, we just want to encourage people to eat healthy. So if you want to try something different, if you want to go to a place where you can get that little bit extra feel-good food, not just about feeling good for yourself, but feeling good about your community, definitely try the Bike Stop Cafe. Well, thank you so much, thank Jody, you. for joining us. Uh, I'm going to call dibs on the wrap right. after we wrap up with the day. Oh, there's a little pun for you. I do want to thank Jody one more time for joining us from the Bike Stop Cafe. Also, earlier, we were joined alongside uh, Officer uh, and Gilly, and it was just an absolute fantastic joy to meet with both of these women and learn about what they do here in the St. Charles community and how they help us out on a daily basis. So for Jody, for Officer Gilly, for myself, David Amelotti, we thank you for joining us on Little Hills Big Hearts.